Hello everyone, Mike here at uh, Steel Green Manufacturing. We're here in the warehouse and today we're going to be going over some key features on the machine, standard options, and as well as maintenance and uh, operation. All right, so we're going to start off here at the top of the uh, dash panel and we're going to go over everything you see here as well as the three cables and then moving down to the sides, the valves, and everything else. So first thing we would talk about is your ignition key. It's right here in the middle of the dash. It's a umbrella key, so it keeps the water out. It's, it's got three positions, off, on. In the on position, you'll be able to run your pump. You'll be able to have your speedometer on. It's powered by the battery at that time, and then we can go ahead and, and fire it up. Next to that is your throttle cable. It's just like it says right here on the dash, idle all the way up to as fast as possible. The choke is not integrated. It's right here on the side, of course. So you'll want to pull that if the machine's cold. If it's already warmed up, there'd be no need to mess with that at all. Moving down here to the right side is your hopper impeller speed control. And as you can see, uh, the picture shows as I turn this valve left, it's going to be spreading wider and wider up to you know, 25, 30 feet, really, it can, it can get going. Um, and all the way down, this does have the ability, you turn this knob all the way till it stops, uh, your impeller will stop spinning at all. That way it's not sitting there grinding up stuff in the hopper when you're not having the gate open and actually spreading material. Over on the left side, you're gonna have four banks for electrical switches. This machine happens to have an attachment, a foam marker accessory, uh, so it has a second switch. The main pump is right here, it is label pump, it'll always be here. Now, not to say you couldn't move that, but, um, and there's two more. Say, if you had a seven gallon tank on the back or even two seven gallon tanks on the back, you could have two sevens, a foam marker, and the main pump. Uh, also going with this pump switch is gonna be down here on the, on the foot of the machine. So down here on the foot plate of the machine is where you're gonna find the foot switch for the pump, and it's gonna be operated by your left foot as you're standing on the machine. Uh, right now, we have this one in the forward most position, and you can also take the two screws out on this plate and flip it 180 to get this pump switch moved back in this area, just in case you have a different stance, you know, or you just personal preference. And we will continue on starting up at the speedometer. The speedometer is dead center, so you can easily see it while you're on the machine. It's going to give you a voltage readout at all times of your battery, as you can see there. Um, that it will be set if this voltage ever drops below 12 volts you'll have a flashing light in these corners to let you know hey something's up your your machine is not charging the battery appropriately so that that's a nice feature to have it tracks um, speed uh, distance you can have run time you can have total time and it has an accumulated run time this one will never reset and it's just uh, a forever counter for as long as you've been running the machine while it's moving only because it tracks only motion being the speedometer. So on the left of the speedometer is your tack slash hour meter. So you're gonna utilize this for your maintenance intervals and also to monitor your engine speed. And you always wanna make sure when you run this equipment, it's always best to run it up at the top, top end of the RPM. You know, you may say, oh, I don't wanna run it that, that hard or I, I don't, it's too fast or something, but it's, it's best when it's running full throttle because your engine is spinning as fast as it can, therefore it's gonna charge the battery at the best it can, and it's gonna cool the engine the best it can too because it's got a fan on top of that and it's pulling air through the engine while it's running. So running it mid throttle is, is not a good thing. Um, on the right side of your speedometer is your pressure gauge. This one here runs up to 60 pounds of pressure we do have an optional one that will run 100 pounds of pressure for our high volume system, but that's pretty self-explanatory. It's glycerin filled, so you always wanna make sure you have oil in there. That way your needle's nice and steady for you. All right, so next we're gonna move up to the upper bank and talk about the pressure control valve, boom valves, and cables for the machine here. Starting at the left side, you have your pressure control knob, and this is going to operate by uh, turning it left counterclockwise, is going to back the pressure down by increasing the amount of fluid that's returning to your tanks. And as you drive it in righty tighty clockwise, it's going to shut that return down to the tank, therefore increase the pressure to your boom and your, and your gauge is gonna rise. The three levers here are just plain and simple, left, center, right. You'll have one wing nozzle, one wing nozzle, and the center is two or three nozzles, depending on which size machine you have. Uh, down is the off position and up is the on position for these. 
just so you know. Uh, we'll start on the left cable as far as the cables go. You'll notice this is a turn to lock cable. It will lock left and right, so it will only be unlocked once you get it right in the middle. And that is going to be your pattern adjustment underneath the hopper, right underneath the door. That is what that is operating. That way you can pull it to where you need it, lock it in place and, and not mess with it. Now we'll move over to the right cables. There's two on the right side. You're gonna have your door open and close, the actual gate on the hopper. This one does not lock, it does not need to. You have a setting on the front that handles that. And the cable on the far right is, again, now this is the same cable we use on the left side. That way, if you stock one cable, you know, you're good to go on two cables for replacement if needed. This is going to be your side deflector, which is down there on the left side of the hopper. Yet again, it locks to the left and to the right. So the, hop, the hopper deflector will either be in the up position with this, in is up, and out is down for that side deflector. Your left side suction and return valves, it's gonna be right here, easily to reach from the operator's position. The upper valve is going to be your suction, and when it is horizontal, it is in the on position, and when it is vertical, it is off. So it's going to be pointing to whichever position it is on. Um, below that is the return, and these are the only two valves that will affect this left side tank. Now we can move around to the right side of the machine. Okay, so on the right side of your unit, you'll have the same set of valves here. Suction on the upper, and, and the lower is the return same position will apply. It's going to point to either off or on and that's what it's in. Uh, you will also have another valve on the right side of the machine here that you can utilize. This is going to be the shut off for the hose reel and you're going to want to leave this in the off position perpendicular to the valve body at all times unless you're wanting to use that spray gun because if it's open that 100 foot or 75 foot roll of hose is going to be holding 40, 50 pounds of pressure and when you turn your boom off, it's gonna make your nozzles drip because all the pressure builds up in the hose is gonna back feed through the system. So just make sure you always leave this off unless you're using the hose reel. All right, guys, now we're going to go ahead and remove the operator's pad and check out a couple of things behind that. You just lift up, slides up. We'll just sit it off to the side next to the wheel. Okay, first off, what I'd like to talk about is gonna be your main filter housing for the liquid system of the machine. It is a Banjo 50 mesh filter, and it has a valve right here that you can shut it off, which is in the off position right now. That way it'll minimize any chemical that's gonna leak out of this when you take this off to clean your screen, change your O-ring, or something to that effect. You can also drain the chemical that would be remaining, remaining in the bowl from this plug at the bottom, reinstall it, and then put it back on to the inline position, and then you'd be good to go. Next, I wanna review the parking brake, which is connected to the fantastic drum brakes that we have on this machine from Parker, integrated with the wheel motors. I always recommend customers to take an open palm and push down and over into the slot. It just keeps your knuckles away from getting, from getting knocked or hurt on, on some stainless steel here, which is very sharp, as you all know. So just always remember, open palm makes it nice and easy. All right, guys, so next thing we're going to talk about is going to be a couple things in the front of the machine. Uh, we're going to talk about the impeller. That'll be second. First, I'm going to go over the rate gate linkage, rate dial, and rate dial holder. Uh, these are three popular items to have on hand because it can be commonly uh, bumped against something or something like that and it can happen. So real cheap items, very good to have on hand as spares. So the dial, how this operates is you just set it in line. The setting is going to be the, the lowest point of the dial here because this tab on your linkage is going to back up and hit the dial on whatever you want it set on. So right now we're about five and three quarter, I'd call it. And one other thing that you should look out for with this dial is you want to make sure you don't accidentally have the slot that runs through the dial in line with your linkage because it can get behind it and then it can move on you and when you shut your hopper door, bam, it's gonna knock that dial off and you lose your dial. So just always make sure you got it, you know, somewhere where it's gonna hit the face of the dial. All right, moving down to the impeller, 
I just want to show you guys real quick how easy and reusable this clip is that we have that holds the impeller to the shaft. So it's got a, a spring to it and it goes down and wraps around the bottom of the shaft. That's why the shaft goes down so far past the impeller. So to remove this, it's pretty simple. You just have to uh, grab onto this and you just lift up on it. It comes from around the shaft and then you just pull it right out. The impeller will drop off and come out. And that clip is perfect the way it was, straight as an arrow. You don't have to bend it when you put it through there or any, anything like that. And you would take your new impeller that you had with you on the truck, line it up with the hole, push it back through, and then you just simply push that clip back around the shaft like that. That's it. Easy. Hey guys, thanks for watching us here and checking out our videos. If you have any more questions, feel free to reach out to us via email at parts at steelgreenmfg.com or go to our website, which is steelgreenmfg.com for other ways to contact us.